I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. Uh, today, we have another exciting episode with another amazing guest. Um, we, we're going to go ahead and welcome in Mr. Andrew Capercio. And he is not only an author, but he's also the founder of Bless to Announce Project. Andrew, Absolutely. welcome in. How, how, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, I'm blessed to be here. I'm excited to chop it up. Love what you're doing. So I'm excited to get into it and, and share some stories and thoughts today with you. So thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Definitely, man. De- definitely. And, and, and speaking about, uh, you know, getting the opportunity to chop it up, you also have a podcast as well. Yep. It's it's a baby right now. It just started, but it's the, the 7% podcast. And, you know, really what we're trying to do with that podcast is share some stories from um, former student athletes. But we kind of want to dive into kind of more of the, the raw side of being an athlete, maybe some of the things that don't get talked about all the time. So um, we, we of course talk about the successes and the wins, but we also highlight a lot of the obstacles and adversity that student athletes face, um, especially surrounding some of those topics that younger athletes don't necessarily receive all that preparation for before they kind of transition to that next level. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I personally love the name, the 7%. How, how'd you come up? Like, where's the origin of that name from? Yeah, so it's the reason it's the 7% is right because everybody kind of goes, well, what does that mean? And then it's a perfect opportunity to kind of segue into, well, 7% is, you know, the percentage of high school athletes that will go on to compete in college athletics, mm-hmm. which, is not, which is not a large amount. But my thing is I always kind of follow up out of that 7%, not all of them are going to graduate. Um, Not all of them are going to finish their collegiate athletic career. So it's even, it kind of dwindles down further from there. So, you know, the 7% is kind of representing all those student athletes that at some point or another, whether it was one, one season, one red shirt year, one practice made it to the collegiate level for athletics. Well, I, I did not even know. I didn't know that fact myself. That's my that's mind blowing. And then is this this is collegiate a- athletics as a whole, like Division One, Junior College, like this is all of that. Yeah, and I think it's it's kind of like a round average. I think it you know it's, it's it varies between each sport. Obviously, it's a little different, but I think when you take the sum of all of them, that's about what it comes out to. Um, when I was researching it, and it may not be you know seven point zero, but yeah, 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 seven percent sounds a little better than the seven point two eight percent podcast. <laughs> so we went with it. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. But Andrew, man, take us back because I saw some of your, uh, you know, I saw some some of your stuff. I, I did a little bit of my research. I, I, I saw some write ups on you here, some write ups of you there. And I, I saw you with your football gear on, man. So, like, j- just talk a little bit about your story and, you know, when you got in, in, involved with with athletics at yourself. Yeah, I was. I was pretty much born into athletics. So, you know, as soon as I turned five years old, I was, I don't even remember wanting to play, but I think I was forced to play. My first organized sport team was soccer. Um, That did not last long. I I kind of bumped into the other guys too much and I I had a little too much rough housing on the field. So the next year I was able to do my first year of flag football. Um, I, I remember my first two years of football very well because I was an offensive lineman for the only time in my career, not a very big guy. But while I was a kid, I was not a standout athlete, so um, I played offensive line. But I played football every year from the age of six until I graduated college, even when, you know, actually my, my hometown lost their youth football organization, and we actually drove to the nearest town because it was just something I was, you know, I was so passionate about as a kid, and I think my parents recognized that at a young age, and they were willing to support me in whatever it took to kind of continue to keep that fire going. I also competed in several other sports. Um, In in high school, I played, I did wrestling, I did football, and I played baseball my freshman year and ran track my senior year. But really primarily my big two were kind of wrestling and football. Um, I I wrestled all four years on varsity, played football. I didn't even start in football actually on varsity until my senior year, kind of interesting. I was about five foot eight, 155 pounds my junior year. 
Um, I always had these huge aspirations. I would kind of walk around telling everybody, hey, I'm going to play college football. Um, and even like by the time I was getting to be a junior, even my own, my, my parents were like, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. You know, let's see. Uh, we're not we're not shutting you down, but, you know, let's keep yeah. keep an open mind. Um, you know, my teammates would kind of be like, are you sure you, you think that's really going to happen? Um, even my coaches were kind of like, you know, not even super supportive, but um, that junior junior year heading into my senior year, it went from, you know, it went from being an aspiration and a goal to me deciding that it was going to happen. It was a, it was a major mindset shift for me. So uh, my junior year heading into senior year, I got my first job. I was working a lot. Well, I didn't get my first job, but I had had my second job, but I was working going into that senior year. Um, I had kind of used the money from my job and re, you know, I really, I literally went on Google and typed in uh, Phoenix football trainers. Like nobody had told me to do that. Like I just, I was hungry, right. I wanted to figure out what I needed to do. Um, I got, I went, started going to a trainer, uh, Showtime performance, shout out to Arab and Justin and Phoenix. But uh, I started going there like three, four days a week. Didn't miss a single team workout was still working a job. Um, and I, I was dedicated to this. I, I probably put on about 30 pounds. Oh my um, and, you know, I was doing crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I was eating four McDonald's cheeseburgers a day. I was putting olive oil on my shakes. I mean, I was living, breathing. What can I do to become a college football player? I mean, people must have thought I was insane. I, I did a, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. I did the uh, Go Mad Challenge, which was kind of a fad, like, mm -hmm. you know, back or maybe around 2010, around that time, where I drank a gallon of whole milk, a whole gallon every day for 21 days straight what and the first day I'll never forget I, I had no idea like how to I'm like how am I gonna do this right so I wake up at like five typically because you know me and my three brothers would get up we'd all get ready go walk to the bus stop and I, I get up at five and I'm like well how does this work do I bring the milk to school do I just kind of chug some in the morning and hit it right away when I get home so the first day I drink like a half a gallon of milk from like five to 5:45 before I go to the bus stop, and I'm thinking that I'm like a little embarrassed. I'm like, I don't want to bring the milk to school. Ended up embarrassing myself further because I'm about to get on the school bus. The doors do their double door open in front of me, and it was like a movie scene. I just threw up milk right oh. onto the stairs of the bus. The bus driver just kind of looked at me like, "Dude, what?" Like, and I kind of just looked at him, wiped my mouth off. I'm like, "I'm good." <laughs> didn't throw up the didn't throw up the rest of the day got on the bus went to school came home finished the milk um that's just a little funny story but you know I was really dedicated and, and passionate about playing football uh, my senior year rolled around I, I broke seven school records I was team captain first team all state led the state for my division in a couple statistical categories um you know I, I still wasn't really seeing the recruitment that I had thought I deserved or you know and, and I might talk about this a little later on the show, but you know, they, you'll you'll learn that you don't really deserve anything in recruiting. It's like just what you earn, and it's that's kind of part of the process. So senior year ends, and I've got two offers to like very tiny schools, um, NAIA schools that are like partial scholarships, and they they were not going to be a financial opportunity. Um, it didn't make sense. It wasn't really affordable. Um, so end of senior year, here I was, um, I had a 26 on my ACT, I had a 3.4 GPA. I didn't even apply to any colleges that didn't offer me. So I, I wasn't even accepted into any schools at this point, And I didn't have any clue what I wanted to do because I, I was seeing my dreams kind of crumble before my <laughs> eyes. Um, I was considering, you know, joining the military. I was considering taking a year off. I was considering you know, all these different options. Uh, long story short, I ended up walking on at junior college. That's where my college career began. Um, and, you know, that really, that experience obviously, you know, went on to change my life forever. But that's kind of a little bit of the, the athletic background story with a, you know, a couple funny bits mixed in there. But I was, I've been passionate about sports my entire life. And it's definitely something that kind of just shaped the trajectory of how I, you know, ended up just, you know, maneuvering through college and graduating and, and still to this day. Man, yeah, Andrew, man, I want you to rewind, man, back just a second. And I want you to just to talk a little bit about, like, where you were. You said in junior year, junior and senior year, where, where you were talking about everybody was looking at you like you were crazy when you were saying you're going to be a college athlete. You said your parents were saying, not your parents weren't saying you're crazy, but you know your parents are, are here to protect us and 
you know, just make sure it's like, okay, well, if he doesn't make it, then I just want to help make sure that he's positioned to where the fall doesn't hurt that bad. Talk, talk a little bit about, about that mindset shift and, and like what really flipped the switch for you from going, I'm going to play high school football to it, it's, it's the decision to where college football is me and I am college football. Talk about that, man. Yeah, and I think it even stems back to my childhood. I left this detail out. I skipped a grade. I went from kindergarten to second grade, so I was always – I was extremely young. So my my senior year of football – or let's just let's put it in a better perspective. I played my freshman year of college football at 17, and I didn't turn 18 until February, my second semester of college. So my entire life, though, I was – you know, I was like five foot four, 115 pounds my freshman year. Um, and, and, you know, every year leading up to that, I was the smallest dude on every team that I played on or, or one of the, and, you know, I remember like being in school, you know, when they're, when you're in youth football and it's split up by age. So I would have my, my peers and my grade that were older than me. And like, we would play the games on Saturdays and I was having like three touchdown, four touchdown games. And everybody at school was always like, oh, it's cause you play with the little kids. And I'm like, no, I play with the kids my age. Um, but it was this constant, like, I had to prove everybody wrong. So even in high school, when I was hearing these comments, it was putting fuel on my fire for the longest time. But that mindset shift, the biggest, the biggest thing, and this changed the trajectory for forever to this day, I, I realized that as long as I was trying to prove other people wrong, I was never going to prove myself right. And I changed from trying to prove other people wrong to, I just said, I'm gonna do this for me, right? This is about myself and what I want to accomplish. So I kind of blocked out that noise, right? I really, it, it went in one ear and out the other. When people, you know, questioned my ability to move on to that next level, uh, I was still getting it as a freshman in college. I was still getting it as a sophomore, you know, being at a junior college, obviously nobody wants to stay there, right? So everybody's talking about transferring next steps. I was still getting that. And I, it didn't affect me. You, you could ask my teammates, you know, you could ask my coaches, I always had a positive mindset because I was focused on myself and what I was doing. I did not let um, those outside opinions and voices kind of shape who I was. And, you know, on the playing field, I, I made the mistake of letting that affect me a little later in my career, but as who I was as a person and my goals and aspirations um, to this day, I don't believe in like getting external motivation from other people doubting me right because I see that as a natural thing like people doubt you like of course they're gonna doubt me I was a five foot eight 150 pound white cornerback and I said I was gonna go play college football and it's like you don't see that and it just doesn't happen and you know so and and my high school actually you know in like 22 years I think we only sent maybe you know we sent less than 10 guys to play college football so it was even more of a kind of just like a you know an unknown um you know next step at that school so but yeah, the biggest thing was just a mindset shift, right? I'm, I'm not worried about proving other people wrong. I want to prove myself right. And it, was, it became more fulfilling. I wasn't pushing to get the satisfaction of saying, ha, I showed you. It was, I got the satisfaction out of going, you know, thank goodness everything that I did for myself paid off. And, and I'm the one benefited from this. And I, I'm grateful that I'm able to be here and do this to this day. Man, yeah, I love that. Because I think so, so often, I call it scoreboard watching. You know, we, we get so caught up either comparing ourselves to other people or at the same time, we get so caught up to where uh, we're trying to prove everybody wrong. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure we see this all the time on Instagram. People are always talking about, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I got to do this for this reason. I got to do it for that reason. As opposed to just, you know, taking ownership of our own personal lives and realizing that if we don't begin to lock in and do it for ourselves, then we won't get the true value and the true uh, benefit of that. So I want you now, Andrew, to talk, talk, talk a little bit about your, uh, talk a little bit about your book, man. Cause, cause, cause your book is named after your, after your, your foundation or your, your project. Right. And, and the book came first, actually, Okay. okay. But same, you know, same difference, right? It's the same thing. They're both named the blessed to announce. Um, and the name came from, you know, everybody on social media posting, I'm blessed to announce my commitment to this school. I'm blessed to announce I received an offer from the school and kind of our ideology behind that is we want young student athletes to be able to say, you know, I'm blessed to announce I'm becoming a doctor. I'm blessed to announce I'm becoming a father. 
blessed to announce I'm starting a business. I'm blessed to announce I'm going to the NFL more than just outside of sports. Um, the book itself was me reflecting on my experience as a college athlete. This was after, after I graduated college, I uh, was done playing sports. I knew I had a passion for working with youth. Uh, I work in youth development and I wanted to find a way to make an impact with kids that maybe I couldn't necessarily work with in person. Like, you know, like how can I make a, how can I impact kids in different States, different areas that I'm not able to, you know, talk to or coach or be on the field with. Um, so I, you know, I thought, okay, well we can do a book, right. But I had no experience writing. Uh, fortunately it's pretty easy to write about yourself and write about something that you know a lot about. And I know a lot about football and playing college football. So I just kind of sat down and the book itself is a resource, right? So it talks through everything that I struggled with. You know, I came from a supportive background. My parents did go to school, but I had never had anybody in my family who played a college sport, right? And I talk about, you could have all the support in the world, but without the right knowledge, support can only get you so far. So we didn't know what we were doing. We, we didn't know where to put that support and our, you know, what resources we had. So um, that book, was me being able to go back, okay, 16 year old Andrew, I remember all that anxiety, all that frustration, all that um, even pain from not being able to achieve the you know, result that I wanted as far as going to college initially was. And then when I got into school, the struggles and pain and things that I experienced through, through lack of preparation, because nobody knew, right? Nobody, these things aren't talked about in recruiting because nobody's gonna talk to you about that bad stuff, right? That's not gonna help you pick a school. So the book became, I could give you this when you're a junior, sophomore in high school, freshman, even a senior, even a freshman in college, and you could read that book and you're going to learn everything about what, hap what happened to me, what decisions I made what, that were great for myself, what, which ones were poor for myself, which affected me negatively. And it's just kind of a culmination of the experience I had and the things I learned and the people I was around. Being in a, a couple of different programs gave me you know, different perspectives. Um, I had a lot of guest writers in the book um, from Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three coaches, strength and conditioning coaches, trying to bring different perspectives in. Uh, so it's kind of relatable to everybody, right? Whether you are going to a, a Power Five school or you're walking on at a junior college, like I did myself. Um, so that was that was an awesome experience, you know. Uh, for me, it, it doesn't matter if I sold ten books or ten million. Uh, a couple kids, you know, I sent out books for free when I was first starting it off, and I would receive messages on social media like, you know, this is a blessing. Thank you so much. Though that that was that was the impact exactly what I had envisioned or what I wanted, and that was just so fulfilling. Um, and I and I love being able to, you know, just share my journey with other athletes in hopes of kind of inspiring them and setting them on the right path at an early age to to help them find their chances for success. Yeah, man, I think that's amazing work, and I and I love what you're doing with the Blessed to Announce project and. I'm curious, like, what is your goal, like, long term? Because you're you're a young man, Andrew. You're a young man. You know, like we talked on the phone the other day. You know, I was telling you, I, I think I think you're doing great work, and I'm I'm excited to see where you end up. But like, what are your what is your vision for you know where you see your program and you know just the work that you that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. And to give a little context, the Blessed to Announce project is a, a nonprofit organization that I founded after writing a book and after working with kids in my, my regular professional career. And I kind of find this gap, right, in, in sports development and youth development where college athletes got a lot more support than high school athletes. But mm -hmm. by the time you get to college, you're experiencing so many different things at the same time. It can be a little overwhelming and very difficult to put energy and time into it. And, and it might even be a little too late, like teaching juniors and seniors about financial literacy or career services and stuff you're just shortening the amount of time that they're able to apply those things mm -hmm. so you know our, our goal is to hit student athletes while they're younger and we see it having a couple of different positive outcomes um, you know increasing college retention rates for programs graduation rates but also just opening more opportunities and, and having student athletes leverage their experience more uh, so that's a little just context to what we do do now, what we do is partner with athletic programs and we're, we're, you know, only one year old at this point. And we just did our first run through of the college pipeline program. Um, you know, the virus prevented a few challenges on the back half of it, but I'm, I'm really proud of the work that we did. And we just kind of finished this up last week and the, the feedback has been great from the athletes. Uh, we also did 
just some guest speaking while we were young to programs, just talking about uh, next steps, preparing for college, sharing a little bit of my story. But now the next steps is this next upcoming fall, we're looking to integrate within athletic programs where this becomes a mandatory service that we're, we're you know, collaborating with schools and coaches that your athletes will come and it could be all sports. It could be one sport, you know, just depending on what the school needs, but this is like a classroom setting. And we, we run this program throughout the duration of their entire semester, whatever sport is in season. And it's very in depth and we cover all these different stages of what it takes to be a college athlete. And, and where we kind of differ is we don't really talk about like recruiting or training we don't really focus on like the athletic side of becoming a college athlete because i think they have most athletes have a lot of support in that area through their coaches and there's a lot of resources out there right there's a ton of stuff on that what we talk about is the stuff that doesn't get talked about uh, mental health financial literacy academic success you know a, a big pet peeve of mine is telling a 15 year old kid you need to get this arbitrary number on your sat and this number on your gpa you know and then just leaving them at that. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, we're going to talk to you about how to actually build study habits. You know, what is it going to look like when you transition to college? What are the differences between high school and college? Um, but rewinding a little bit. So we cover those different things. And, you know, we're looking to integrate with programs. Um, we see this being a program that could be implemented at every high school in the state, um, every high school in the country, really, it could be duplicated and grown, building a team of people that are passionate about the work like myself and having them be able to run it. Um, and, 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 you know, the opportunity is there. And it's, you know, it's something that I'm looking forward to. And, and of course, it's going to kind of develop and there will be some pieces that will, you know, grow over time. And I'm sure there'll be some changes made, but um, I'm confident in our curriculum right now. I'm really confident in the work that I think we'll be able to do. And I'm really excited about the opportunities we have this upcoming fall. Um, nothing is inked in yet, but I'm I'm very confident we'll have a couple partnerships and get our first two schools on board. And I'm looking forward to that impact. Um, you know, and then aside from that, we did our the college pipeline program. We had kids from three different schools this year, and it was a small group. That's almost like a mentorship program where we go really in depth. Um, and that'll still be a component. And we see that being like a program that kids have to apply for. And then there's a scholarship reward involved or travel to camps and college visits things of that nature, where it's almost kind of like um, players are nominated by their coaches or community leaders or teachers, and it becomes kind of a, you know, it's got a kind of a prestige to it, right? Like, oh, I'm in this program. That means I'm very serious about taking my talents to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, something I'm really passionate about, though, and, I, and I'm really excited for the future. But, but when you talk about kind of like long-term outlook, I see us just being integrated with athletic programs where we have curriculum for each grade level and we're just in there every year and it becomes something where the kids are like, Oh, you know, we got blessed to announce today before school or after school. And it's in their yeah. routines, right? Oh, Hey, don't forget. We got blessed to announce today. Did you do your assignment? Something like that. But we're covering such crucial topics that, you know, don't really get discussed in school. Um, and they don't really, you know, coaches, it's not that they don't care about these things at the high school level. They're just overwhelmed and they got so many different things to do. And, you know, a lot of players don't even want to play college sports, but all these skills, that's why we're not talking about running a 40 yard dash. If you don't even go to college at all, time management's a good skill to have leadership, mm -hmm. character, yep. financial literacy. It, it don't, it doesn't even have to do with sports. This is not a sports organization. It's a youth development nonprofit where we, our niche is kind of just specializing with athletes, which make up a good portion of high schools, you know, obviously in most cases anyways so man yeah so have you always had the passion to work with like the the high, high so it's typically high school or is it high school and middle school or the focus is high school more so right now we're just at high school um okay. and, and you know funny enough when i when i transferred to concordia st paul my alma mater you know i was a i was a juco football player i i wasn't even thinking about my profession i it, it didn't even cross my mind and, you know, when I transferred, the only I, I committed without picking a major. So that tells you where I was at. Um, right. That's not a good thing to do when you're transferring into your fourth year of college. And because I had red shirt, I was a red shirt sophomore when I was transferring. So, you know, long story short, they said you can be a criminal justice major or a sociology major. Um, I didn't have a super preference between either of those two, but I, I went with sociology 
and I literally graduated with a 3.98 GPA and zero job prospects, zero job offers, zero idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I grabbed an internship for $13 an hour working at a youth homeless shelter for teenagers. Mm -hmm. And that experience changed my life because I instantly was challenged by that work and I instantly fell in love with it. And when I say fell in love with it, I think you can just hear it when I talk about it and with what I do now, it's something that I truly believe um, not enough people are passionate about and it doesn't receive the respect it, you know, it should in, in the professional world, just working with kids in general. But um, so I worked at that shelter for about six months. Um, you know, unfortunately, like I just mentioned, they, you know, th that's what they pay 13 an hour. That's kind of where you're stuck at. And that's why it's very difficult to retain staff that are passionate like myself. I kind of just had to move on because I, I just needed to, you know, I had other responsibilities that needed to be attended to. So, but that experience really is what kind of propelled that. And then, you know, I, I work in the public school system now, younger kids, but um, I coach through the park board. I do BTA. So I'm connected to kids all day, every day. Um, and it's just, you know, it's a blessing for me, but that experience was, you know, I, I can say I was fortunate to find my passion and my professional passion in the first job that I took after college, just by just by chance. I mean, I had zero idea what I was getting into. The interview, the interview was like, you know, the, and this is not, you know, this is not uncommon. It might sound kind of crazy to some people, but they'll ask you in interviews at positions like that, you know, are you comfortable being verbally and physically or putting yourself at, you know, verbal abuse and potential physical harm through clients? And they asked me that and I, was, I, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, yeah, I mean, I don't care. I'm good, right? Like, I want the job. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. I'm like, I want the job. Yeah. Uh, but then you get there and uh, you're really, you know, that stuff does happen on, on a daily or, you know, weekly, if not a daily basis. Um, and it definitely takes, takes somebody who loves the work to want to come back each day. But um, that was a phenomenal experience. I speak so highly of it. Um, anybody who's considering going into even like teaching any type of youth work, if you can put yourself in an environment where you work with kids for eight hours straight, you cook for them, you do their laundry, you li you're basically living with them um and you can build those types of connections i think that's why you know that part feels natural for me when it when it comes to what i do now and how i how i work with athletes man yeah well i want to just thank you for for doing that work because i agree I, I think there's two types of jobs that everybody should have as they uh, identify what their profession or what their career potentially would be one would be I would say that you have to work with children in some respect or regard because I, I used to run a after school program and whoa, I, I worked with pre-K all the way up to fifth grade, man, whoa. I mean, you like, just like you said, it's one of the things like where some days you hate it, you go home and you're like, you're stressed out, you want to cry. But then the next day you're like, I got to come back because these kids, they mean that much. So I would say everybody should work with kids, even if you don't like them because it challenges you and, and, and also really pulls out a level of empathy. But also I think everybody should have a service, uh, a, a job that, that's in the service industry, like a restaurant or something like that. Because I think that humbles you in a way that sometimes you won't get humbled in in, in other, in other um, professions and other careers. But yeah, Andrew, man, I, I definitely wanna thank you for, for the work that you've done. Uh, the work that you're doing, I, I love the work that you're doing. And man, if I'm ever in Minnesota, uh, I, I definitely want to want to get connected with you and, and, and see what we can do, man, or, or come out there and just, you know, be, be a resource in, in any way. So, um, yeah, but uh, man, Andrew, I, I want to, uh, before I let you get out of here, like I told you before, um, you know, this is the Beyond the Ball podcast. We have a little bit of fun. You know, we talk story, success and strategy, but we have a little bit of fun, Andrew. So, so now we're going to do this, this thing that I like to call the, the two minute drill. Uh, and the two minute drill is just like it is in football. You know, uh, there's two minutes. I'm, I'm gonna ask you some rapid fire questions. You're gonna shoot off the answers and then we're, we're, we're gonna roll. So Andrew, are you ready? I'm ready. It's my favorite drill in college. Let's do oh, it. Oh man, let's go. Okay, here we go. Favorite food? Mac and cheese. Okay, okay. A book that you're currently reading? 
I just finished uh, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter by 50 Cent, which I'm going to highly recommend to anybody. So I haven't actually got into my next one yet, but I just finished that. Okay, good, good, good. I need to check that out. Your, your, your Netflix, your quarantine Netflix show of preference. I don't know if it's on Netflix, but it's on Hulu, but Chopped. Okay, I love the cooking shows. Yep, oh, Chopped. okay, okay. I, I could watch the cooking shows for eight hours straight. I've probably exhausted my options on there pretty soon here. Oh, that, my, my wife loves the cooking shows. Okay, uh, what, what's, what's your all-time favorite movie? All-time favorite movie is Pursuit of Happiness. I love, I love uh, Will Smith's role there and how he's trying to provide for his family. That's a classic. Favorite quote? Favorite quote, it's hard to beat a man who never gives up. That's Babe Ruth. Um, I put it on my portfolio in like eighth grade and it's just like engraved into my brain. Okay, okay. Who, who would you like to, what, what guests would you like to see next on the Beyond the Ball podcast? Beyond the Ball podcast, let's see. Oh man, two minute drill. I'm, I'm fumbling right now. Um, I got a former teammate of mine. I think it would be a, a great guest to bring on. Uh, his name is Hiram Velez. I just had him on a 7% podcast. He's doing some pretty cool things. He's a, he's a great leader, had a kind of unique career. So I think he would be a fun guest to have on. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get him. And the last thing is one tip for a student athlete. One tip for a student athlete, uh, vision. And, and I don't mean vision by having good eyesight. I mean, keeping your eyes on a reason why you started in the first place at all times. No matter what lows and highs you hit, you can never forget why you're there in the first place. Keep yourself grounded. Stay focused on what your end goal is, no matter what's going on around you in the moment. Boom. There it is. There it is. That that that, that was your two-minute drill with Mr. Andrew Capercio. 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 Oh! If it makes you feel any better, uh, everybody calls me Cap because nobody could pronounce that in school. Um, and it's a you know, it's a difficult one, so. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Well, where, Andrew, where, where can people find more information? How can people connect with you? And then where can people uh, reach out if, you know, they want to, you know, check out your services and things like that? For sure. You could, you could look up Blessed to Announce Project on just about any social media. It should come up, but BTA, just BTA Project on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, BTA announce or you know BT announce on Facebook um, my name Andrew Capercio you can look that up for my personals but you know www.blessedtoannounce.com is the page for our nonprofit organization if you're interested in learning more about what we do and if you're interested in the book the blessed to announce that is on Amazon just type in blessed to announce um, from walk on to team captain that'll be on there um, I would love to connect with anybody I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to learn more about what you do. Um, definitely hit me up and, and connect with me. There it is. You heard it from Cap here himself from Cap, Mr. Andrew. Mr. Mr. Andrew. Well, Andrew, we, we definitely appreciate you, man, taking the time to, to hop on, to, to, to share a little bit of your story with us. To Man, because I, I mean, I'm inspired just by hearing, like you said, the work that you have, have done with the youth, the work you continue to do with the youth. Because like I said, I used to work with the youth so it takes me back so man definitely thank you for for, for coming on and everybody be sure to check out his podcast also the seven percent podcast check it out leave a review rate it and then let him know what you thought but andrew you got any final thoughts for the people if not we're gonna let you go man and let you you know enjoy the rest of your day Nothing more for the people, but just for you. Thank you for having me on. It was a blessing. This was this was fun. You know, I've been on a few podcasts, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, and, I, you know, I'm looking forward to staying connected and, and following the Beyond the Ball podcast. So had a great time today. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. My man. Thank you. Well, everybody out there, uh, follow Andrew. We're going to have all his information down in the show notes. And also, if you're not following Beyond the Ball on Instagram, you can connect with us at Go Beyond the Ball. We'd encourage you to share, we'd encourage you to rate, and we'd encourage you to leave a review. Leave a review. But I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball.